Hi guys, welcome back to The Sullivan Pursuit. If you're returning, I appreciate your continued support. If you're new here, I make videos about my travels as well as like tip videos. Today, I'm gonna be doing my video on how I afford to travel. I get this question constantly, which I, it's understandable. People are like, how do you travel so much? Well, I am going to spill all of my secrets today. So yeah, let's start with a little bit of my background. Okay, so without diving too far into my background, basically I have been on my own since around 17. Um, I've worked a lot. Um, I worked through high school and then when I got to university, I was working 40 hours a week in addition to going to school. So I saved a lot of my money for that. Um, in my last few years of university, I put everything aside to save and I saved up about $9,000. I was also living off like ramen noodles and stuff to save this money. Um, with that money, I was able to start a backpacker's lodge in the city of Tallahassee, Florida. Um, this is the Sun and Moon Hostel. It's still there. It's an amazing property and business and I'm really happy for the new owners. Um, I was able to sell that business last year and with the money from selling that business i did some investments and i have been traveling with that money since then so that money has lasted me about two years i would say and i think i have a little bit more but i'm actually going to need to start work soon so hopefully these videos go viral and if anyone knows of a online job hiring let me know First of all, the sort of traveling is completely based on my own experience and it is not for everyone. If you're interested in learning how to travel on the cheap, please continue watching. Um, whether it's a weekend or it's a year, the premise is still the same. How do I travel for as little money as possible? I get asked all the time, how do I travel cheaply? How do I manage to travel for this long? Um, well. I mean, everyone thinks that traveling is this beautiful fairy tale dream, and don't get me wrong, it's like there's nothing I'd rather do with my life. But it's not easy. There's a massive difference between vacationing and traveling. You're constantly put in dangerous situations, and I honestly think it's one of the hardest things you can do. You're exposed to new situations, exposed to new viruses. And you usually never know what your next day actually is going to look like. Sometimes you don't even know where you're going to sleep that night. Most nights I didn't really have a plan for where I was going or what I was doing. The reason I do it is because seeing all these beautiful cultures and being able to climb tall mountains and swim in like foreign oceans is so, so freaking worth it. Like if I could use the F word right now, it would be fun, but it's so worth it. Sometimes I do a day budget depending on the country, like for example in a cheaper country I would give myself a budget of maybe like $40 a day, including accommodation, food, everything. If I'm in a more expensive country like the UK, it might go up to $60 a day, $70, whatever it is. I try to stay below a certain amount of money so I can keep traveling. But in general, I don't budget as much. I do intuitive spending. So if I went on a day tour that day and it was quite expensive, I will go to the grocery store and get some cheap food to cook for dinner to kind of off balance it. So that's what I mean when I say intuitive spending. I also don't buy too many things when I travel. I do travel with just a backpack with all of my possessions on my back. So it is easier to, if I do get something, get something small, which is usually cheaper. Um, I try to get postcards, which are in general, roll of thumb, 25 cents almost anywhere you go. Um, and it's nice to have them for yourself. I always tell people, get a postcard for yourself. Cause like, you're gonna get your postcards for your friends and family so that they can see where you are. But you wanna have something for yourself to look back on as well. Accommodation is a huge one. That is what most people put their money towards while they're traveling is accommodation. There is a way to do it for cheap. And usually the cheaper you do it, you get a more unique and local experience as well. 
Um, I like to stay in a different variety of places. Um, I'll stay in hostels sometimes and meet fellow travelers. I'll stay in Airbnbs. I'll stay in different things. Like in Norway, I stayed on a wooden fishing boat and I think it was only $25 a night, which for Norway is like absolutely insane. But um, I think that as you're picking your accommodation, Safety is a huge factor in traveling alone. So for me, I prefer hostels where there's a lot of people around as well as Airbnbs because you're the only one that has the key. Whereas in a hotel, you know, the doorman has the key, the maid has the key, everyone has the key. I never really felt safe staying in a hotel room alone. So I do think it's safer to actually go the cheaper routes. I think it also goes back to choosing the country that you're in. For example, in Georgia, I was able to stay in a beautiful guest house with like a king-sized bed, breakfast that morning, dinner at night, and I think all in all it was $17 for everything, whereas like for a simple, simple Airbnb in the city of London where you have a single bed in the center, it's probably going to cost you around $50 or $60 and that's for nothing. If you're by yourself, hostels are a great way to meet people through the Balkans, Ireland, and Malta. I did hostels all the way, also through some of my other travels, but most recently. And I met some of my favorite people that I still talk to today. So I definitely recommend if you want to meet people and you're still a traveler, hostels are a nice way to go. And they also usually have ways to explore the city or tours for cheaper or countryside, wherever you are. So yeah, I'm pro hostel. All right, my next big thing is geography. It often depends on where you wanna go. So if you're wanting to go to Italy, it's gonna cost more than it would to go to Bosnia. If you wanna go to California, it's gonna cost you way more than it would cost you to go to Mexico. So I think geography is a huge thing when it comes to traveling on the cheap. There are ways to do these more expensive countries for cheaper, but I think it like adding the geography, like going to a cheaper country is easier because you can kind of live like you're a king or you're a queen in their country, which is nice. I think in the countries that are cheaper, I feel as if I get a fuller experience at a fraction of the cost. Okay, so here is what I consider expensive. It is Western Europe, Southern Europe, USA, Canada, Japan, Dubai, and like general Oceania, so like New Zealand, Australia. I think those are the more expensive countries to visit. Deeper countries to visit are the Balkans, Eastern Europe, Russia, Bali, Thailand, and Central America. Right. And then my cheapest places to visit are the Caucasus region, which are like Kazakhstan, Georgia, Armenia, and then also South America, Southern Asia, and the Middle East. I think those are the cheapest, and I cannot wait to explore the Middle East. It's like top of my list right now. For transportation, you are going to have to make some sacrifice if you want to travel cheaply. I think you have to be more flexible, like pre-planning kind of puts a hindrance on the flexibility. So like if there's a bus that leaves at 7 a.m., 2 p.m., and 6 p.m., and the morning and night buses are $60, and then the 2 p.m. one happens to be $17. If you had already pre-booked everything, you won't have the opportunity to save that money. It is a little bit riskier as like maybe all the buses are booked, but I will say in general, I'd rather take that risk, which has usually never like put me off or like put me in trouble and pay the extra money. And sometimes even it's gotten me onto a better path than I originally would have taken. Personally, I prefer to take buses and trains most of the time. Um, I think they're the cheapest option and they're the most eco-friendly. Um, planes are quite detrimental to the environment and I did use them quite often, but I am now in the process of like trying to find other ways around them when I travel, maybe even cargo ships, etc.
it is not comfortable all the time. There's going to be a lot of times you're squeezed into a hot bus with no air conditioning. You spend 10 hours in the airport. You sleep in the airport. Like this type of traveling isn't for the faint hearted. You get put in a lot of like shitty situations when you're trying to travel cheaply. Um, I remember I was on a nine hour bus ride. I think it was from Bosnia to Serbia and it was a pressure cooker. It was 40 degrees Celsius outside and we literally, we cooked it. I got to a point where I was like in and out of fainting because it was so high and there was no air conditioning and the windows weren't open. And that's the kind of sacrifices you have to make if you want to be able to extend your money for as long as possible. Going back to flexibility, it's a huge plus. Um, there have been countless times that I had to run through train stations, bus stations, because they're like, there's one leaving now and it's like at a discounted rate and you have your 32 kilo backpack on your back and you're like, ah, I gotta get there. And so you're like running, 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 running. And then when you get there, it's just the most satisfying feeling. I think that the activities you do as well make things cheaper or more expensive. So a lot of the things I like to do, which are like, nature hikes or seeing waterfalls i guess that's the same thing or free city tours or even museums or going out to a bar whatever it is you like to do um <laughs> activities are also a massive strain on the budget sometimes i think there's a way though so that you can do like free city tours they have free walking tours in almost every major city you just tip at the end, which you can tip anywhere from like two to five dollars to like ten dollars, depending on how you felt they did. So you can choose your price, and if you just don't have much, just give what you can. Um, if you want to go see live music, that's usually free as well. Um, going on nature hikes is free. Uh, what else do I do? Um, honestly, day trips with the hostels are usually quite cheap, and you're able to see a lot. So. Most hostels have packages where it's like, we're doing this and because it's a group activity, it's a lot cheaper than it would be if you did it on your own. There's also a multitude of backpacking websites that show you free things to do in the area. There's also this really cool website called Atlas Obscura and they show you weird things that's like really cool to go see in your area, but that's not as well known. So like if you're with a friend or a partner, I highly recommend using Atlas Obscure. It's taking you to some really cool places. Food is my downfall. I spend way too much money on eating out. When I'm traveling, I'm usually too tired to cook or I just like don't have the mental energy. Um, I think it's a great way to save money by cooking, but I also really enjoy seeing the food around the cities or the countrysides where I'm at. And also it's a nice way to socialize, like if you meet people in the hostel, it's a nice thing to be like, oh, well, let's all go out to dinner. Whereas like if you're cooking, you're genuinely cooking by yourself. Sometimes I've had hostel family dinners that have been absolutely amazing and I've really enjoyed them as well. Um, yeah, also, if like your hostel offers breakfast, highly recommend it. And if you want to eat like out in places like London, I used to get a vegan sausage dog at Greg's every single day. So, and I think it was like two pounds. So there is ways to eat cheap, mm. but I like to splurge on food a little bit. <laughs> Okay, this is a big one, um, so I'm just going to come out and say I don't drink alcohol. I got a brain injury a few years ago, and if I drink, I get quite sick now. Um, but that being said, it has saved me so much money. If I was able to drink, I think my money would have run out months ago. Um, a lot of people pay in alcohol the equivalent to what they pay in rent. And when you're traveling, that's another way to socialize. But I think that drinking water or Red Bull can be just as beneficial and having just as much fun. I, I still go out, I go out all the time. I just don't drink, I like vibe off of other people. So much fun without drinking. I think that you can go out, you can still party, dance, vibe, whatever it is. And yeah, so that's all I have for you guys today on how I afford to travel. Split it into sections so hopefully it was easier. 
And I know it was a lot of talking, so I hope you were able to bear with me through everything. Once again, thank you for watching. If you like this video and you want more like this, like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, I'm really excited about my video for next week. I just bought a scratch map, so I will be scratching that off with y'all and showing you everywhere I've been in my, what is it, six years, five years? five, six years that I have left the States to go and travel, sometimes in shorter increments, and then most recently for over a year and a half. So yeah, I will see you then.